Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Apple Brown Betty. But today we're making a simple, traditional American dessert known as the Brown Betty. Very similar to an apple crisp or an apple cobbler. Uh, and while we're making an apple Brown Betty today, you could use any type of fruit that you like. Uh, pears go great in there, berries go great in there. In fact, the, the concept for this recipe dates all the way back to colonial times. In fact, the first recipe started showing up in books in the mid 1800s and that concept called for layering in whatever your fruit of choice is with a sweetened crumb uh, in multiple layers and then baking that into a dessert. So the sweetened crumb would be uh, a utilization of any day old bread, stale bread that you can turn into breadcrumbs, sweeten it up and layer it in there with your fruit of choice. So first thing we're going to do today is we're going to create our breadcrumb using some day old croissants and challah bread. Now today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. It's running at 375 degrees right now with the wood fired oven installed over the firebox. Now I've got pieces of kind of crusty stale uh, croissant and challah bread. Uh, I was trying to use some things that would match with dessert a little bit better, say than a savory application, but you can use any kind of breadcrumb that you have on hand or old bread that you have on hand. Now these are already kind of dried out, not completely there. So we're just gonna toast them off in the oven uh, here at 375 for about 10 minutes to make sure they're fully dried before we blitz them down in the food processor. Now we're using the wood fired oven today because we wanna be able to brown the top of our brown Betty. Uh, but we don't need to worry about getting that much color on these so much as drying them out. So we're just going to bake them on top of the oven for, like I said, about 10 minutes. In addition to apples today, we're going to use some dried cranberries, but I want to rehydrate those in a little bit of hot apple cider while we prep everything else. So just sit here and kind of soften up and soak up some of that apple flavor. I will be using Granny Smith apples for our recipe today. You're going to need three pounds of them for what we're doing. And I'm gonna show you my favorite way to break down an apple that I find it to be the fastest, the easiest, uh, the most effective, and that's by taking off the top and bottom first. Then you can just peel strips straight down the sides. This is any time you're doing uh, a peeled diced apple or even sliced apple. Um, I just find this to be the easiest way to get it done. So then I'll take off the sides here or the flesh leaving that core behind. And then we're gonna do a fairly small dice on our apples today, although you certainly could do slices or larger dice, totally up to you. But we're gonna do something like that, three pounds of apple, Granny Smith, small dice. We're just gonna hold these in some uh, cool water with some lemon juice, a couple tablespoons, just to help them not oxidize immediately. It's been about 10 minutes now. You can see we've got a little browning on here, so these have really dried out nicely and should grind up pretty well. So we're gonna need two cups of breadcrumbs for our recipe today. All right, let's see how we're doing. Oh, it smells like toasted croissant. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a pro move right there. Pick the croissant for the breadcrumb. We scaled out two cups of our breadcrumb. We're gonna add to that our sweetness. So we've got a half cup of brown sugar and a quarter cup of smoked maple turbinado sugar. Um, just for that extra smokiness and that extra tex texture and crunch, we're also going to add about a quarter te teaspoon of smoked whiskey barrel salt and two teaspoons of cinnamon. Just give that a quick mix by hand. And then we add our butter. Now the butter is gonna help to hydrate this crumb so it's not super dry in the end. We started with a three quarter cup of unsalted butter, which is 12 tablespoons. I took one of those tablespoons back so we could grease the pan with it. Uh, but the other 11 are going in here. So now you can see how this uh, is kind of similar to like a, a crisp, which would also have oats in it, or a cobbler or a streusel type topping. Uh, very similar. So we're gonna cook this in a large 10 inch cast iron pan. We're gonna use that last bit of butter I was talking about just to uh, grease the pan here. 
This will both make sure stuff doesn't stick and create that little fat barrier to kind of brown the crisp or the brown betty around the edges. And now we're ready to layer in our fruit and our crumb. We got about two quarts of diced apple here and strained off. So we're gonna do two layers. That first quart will go down. We'll take half of our crumb, put that over the top. This is kind of that middle layer of crumb that's just gonna kind of hydrate as it cooks. It's gonna soak up those apple juices as they start to cook down. And of course, season all these apples as well. And you've got your top layer of fruit. And had I been thinking about it, I probably would have split these cranberries up earlier, but as it is, they're just all gonna go on top here. So these are the cranberries that have been soaking in that warm apple juice. In fact, we might just add a little bit of that juice or cider in there as well. So then you've got your top layer of crumb, and this is that layer that's gonna brown and kind of crisp up as this is cooking down. We want to get some good color on the top of this, which is why we're using the Yoder wood-fired oven attachment today. But that thing will uh, really brown the top of, of this if we let it go full blast the whole time. So we're going to keep an eye on this, brown it to its proper doneness, and then cover it in foil to finish. So we're still sitting at 375 on the temperature here. We're going to set a timer for 20 minutes to come back and check on that. That is looking really nice. This is 30 minutes into the cook. Checked at 20, knew we just needed just a little bit more time. But this is exactly what I'm going for. And what a crust are we getting developed on the top of this thing. Now, I don't want to blacken this, um, but I do want to make sure we get our apples all the way softened. So we're going to cover this with foil now. Slide this back in here and we'll let it cook covered, which will kind of stop the browning on top, trap some of that heat inside. Uh, and that'll finish cooking the apples here in the next probably 15 minutes or so. At which point we can uncover this and crisp it back up if we need to, or just go ahead and pull it out and serve it up. So we're 45 minutes into the cook now. We're gonna give this a little peek. Oh, it's looking good. Got bubbling going on. I'm seeing steam pockets coming up through the middle. Yeah, we're at like 200 degrees internal. These apples should be plenty softened. We're ready to pull this off the grill. This smells amazing. I've given it a little bit of time to cool down, uh, but we're not waiting much longer here. I'm gonna dish some of this up. Now every good Apple Brown Betty needs a little topping on it. Whether it's whipped cream or ice cream is up to you. Today we're gonna do a little vanilla bean ice cream on top. We'll let that melt right in. Finish it off with just another little sprinkle of that whiskey barrel smoked salt. All right, let's get a bite. Oh man. The filling is so warm, gooey apple flavor, but that crisp is just the right contrast to it. With the crunch, mm. just a hint of smoke. Well, I love apple cinnamon flavors. That ice cream on top is almost crucial. I mean, you need something kind of creamy to balance out all that sweetness and the acidity. And the ice cream does exactly that. A little bit of tartness from those pops of cranberry in there. Just a touch of smokiness. I'm probably picking up on that from that smoked salt on top. But all in all, that's just another classic solid apple dessert.
Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.